Charles Steele. I'm at the Lace Mill, and uh, I'm uh, just sharing some of my work. This is one of the largest pieces I've done. It is the largest to date. It's called the Sogi, and it's acrylics, and uh, I really enjoyed the process of making this because it was a huge risk in terms of I've not done a lot of uh, abstract work, and this is definitely in that category, and I feel like I'm finding my niche. Uh, I went on to do several of the large works. They're both, they're all 48 by 48, and uh, this one is called uh, Le Bague Rouge. It's about the red circle, and I was trying to capture the light of gold that sometimes the sky has in the early morning. Uh, it's a certain quality the sun can give the sky, and I tried to capture the mood of that. This one is called The Witch's Storm, and it was painted during a very bad thunderstorm. And actually, after I completed it, I realized that not only is it like witches flying around the sky, but this almost is like the legs open up a woman and uh, in menstruation. And it's just a very profound allegory to the feminine, wrathful energy that is very powerful. So I captured, I think, some of the mood of that storm. Uh, and that and that metaphor for how the feminine isn't always sweet and nurturing in a motherly way. It has a lot of other aspects to it. Uh, and this one, I was going for something like the skies on Jupiter or something. I was trying to <laughs> reference this otherworldly hue of the sky. The skies are so beautiful. And uh, I try to capture that golden light sometimes that happens in sunsets and sunrises, but this is obviously an otherworldly, and it just happened, and it happened, it, it turned out pretty well. I'm pleased with this piece, I really like it. Uh, this was just an extemporaneous thing. I didn't work from a, a, an actual picture. It's from memory of the Esopus and the moon rising over it, over the mountains, and I just, it happened of its own. Um, this is, I, I felt a lot of working with circles this past year. I was drawn to circles as a metaphor for a gateway, for the womb, for the abode of mystery, and also everything in life is cyclical. Uh, so this I was referencing uh, sort of uh, as a portal into the unknown, but then the bamboo with the gold. And I tried to reference the bamboo as this, as this ever new growing plant that is, um, just, it's, a, it's sort of it has a symbol again like the womb or something to do with the female. It's very interesting how that kept happening. And then this was something I was trying to reference as uh, it's called the uh, tabula, uh, stellar tabula. And uh, basically uh, I was trying to capture something of like an ancient ruin or a tablet uh, from some other race. And so, uh, they're traveling between worlds and they're writing about their, uh, you know, people or their, their species, almost like the Sumerians. I was referencing Sumeria or something uh, uh, unknown, always referencing the unknown. And this is the same kind of thing that has to do with the planets, out, outer world beings, other realms, and that's sort of a cosmic gateway to another, to another realm. Uh, and so I've also started out doing more uh, humanistic works, but uh, again, mostly impressionistic. I don't tend to go for photorealism, and here was one of the great ladies of literature, uh, Damita Sitwell, who inspires me as being a woman ahead of her time. She's a great intellectual, she was an iconoclast, she had her own sense of style, she designed her own clothes. And at a time when women weren't appreciated for being all those things, and uh, she left a great legacy of uh, work, a body of work, of literature, poetry. And so I was trying to honor her. A lot of people rendered her in the past and they made her look very ugly and shrew-like. And I think I was trying to honor her grandiosity and her regality instead of making her look like this ugly woman that I saw other people referencing. Um, and then these two were again impressionistic pieces. Here I was trying to capture the line between pleasure and pain. And it's up to the viewer to interpret what's going on with him. It could be extreme pleasure, it could be extreme pain. It's sort of, uh, what is that line? And then this was a friend of mine who I did sort of as a, as a quirky uh, kind of reference to her personality. And she really loved it, so I think I captured it. And, uh, she's fabulous lady. Yes. Here we have 
uh, attempt at realism, but again, a very loose gesture towards roses. I, I love still life, and so I was, for a while there, trying to work with referencing the flowers specifically. And so I did two of the same type of roses. And this one came out a little more visually centered and correct looking, but the other one over here was a little more freeform. And I really like the way I got the hue with the roses and the colors and the textures. It, it, I, I like this little piece a little bit more personally. But as you can see, my work covers, and then I have referenced uh, two of the great ladies in very loose form of like Hedy Lamarr trying to capture her hair. I couldn't possibly capture her beauty, but uh, she was a very intellectual woman as well who was undervalued for that in her day. Even though she was a great intellect, she was known for her beauty and uh, she also became more wealthy and to this day is of note because she invented the protocol for the cell phone that you're filming this on. And she was a Jewish woman. and all of which was a stigma against her at the time, but in spite of those limitations, she uh, gave the world something tremendous we're all using to this day, which is pretty incredible. So I like to honor people of note, who, especially women who are so unrecognized in the world uh, in my art. And then this is just a very loose gesture towards Marilyn Monroe. It's sort of a, a woman having a moment. I always like to capture women having moments of personal reflection because uh, there's so much going on in women and it's so interesting to try to figure out what they're, so I just try to make a reference to the complexity that I see in them. Wonderful, so uh, remind us where we are? We are in the Lace Mill, which is an incredible nexus of the arts. It's a, it's a burgeoning artist colony. Uh, we've grown so much since we opened in, I think it was 2015. I'm so privileged to live here. I never imagined I'd be living in a venue like this. It's more than a, a residence. It's like a, it's like a social experiment, it's really, uh, and it's such a catalyst to bring out creativity in me because I'm constantly being inspired by my neighbors who are also artists and it's bringing more impetus to me wanting to create because I'm just in this like vortex of creativity and, and just to reference your work and to be able to display it on this kind of a space is really spectacular so I'm so happy to be here. Wonderful, so tell, tell the people how long will the show happen? It's running from today the 1st of 2020 all the way to arguably I think the last week of February, uh, Saturday and Sunday, every week for the rest of February. And what are the hours, Saturday uh, and good Sunday? Good point, uh, from, uh, let's see, what is it, 12 to 4? I think it's 12 to 4. On Saturday and Sundays? Till the end so. of February. Forgive me because I'm the artist. I All don't right. tend we'll do, to sit. It, but, but it will be open uh, until 4 o'clock. Yes, sure. absolutely. All right. Thank you, thank Charles Steele.